Hey guys, Mary Language here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am actually going to be painting this wall behind me as well as one behind this wall um, in my new studio. So today is September 26th of 2021. So in case you wanna know where I'm at in the studio building process, cause it's definitely not done in here. Um, you can go check out the renovation videos that I'll link in the description below. It's at a time in the process where we've already painted the walls white. All the walls are gonna stay white except for this wall, which I've been wanting to do what's called a distressed or like fake distressed, <laughs> fake ruined, think like an old brick wall or an old rustic wall. It's got like peeling and dripping and sanding and lots of these interesting things that uh, I wanna just try. So I have this painting that I did a while ago that's been in my house and I wanna match the colors to this a little bit more so than I had in, in my head, I think a brighter version. And I'm like, I think I gotta go lighter. So I don't want it to be too, too crazy obvious and too irritatingly and irritating and noisy, you know, visually. So I went for the colors like this, went to Home Depot and just got sample paints. Um, and the colors that I'm gonna, that I chose are based off the painting. So I held the painting up to the whole wall of colors that's overwhelming when you go there and picked the colors that I think are gonna work the best for this. So they're very pastel-y. We have candle wick, candle wick. So slightly yellow, nothing too, too yellow. Up against the white, it'll look yellow. Um, and then pink elephant. Woohoo, pink elephant, cute. And you can see next to the yellow, it looks fairly pink. Then we got pink posies. Pink posies, definitely a cooler pink. You can see the difference there. Still very similar in value though, which is what I was going for. So I didn't want anything to certain colors to pop too much. And then we have Jade Mist, which I was kind of just sort of trying to match it to the color of the house, which right now you see the shed back there, which is sort of a minty color. I don't, I didn't go for exact, obviously, because I didn't bring a sample, but something close. Again, they're all similar values, but they're gonna be colorful enough on this wall, hopefully. So we're gonna give it a try. I've never done this before, but I've wanted to do it for so long. So come along with me and we'll figure it out together, I guess. But to pick these colors, I literally had to hold this up to the wall of color choices and I mean, look at that yellow's like spot on. And pick colors that kind of went with this painting because I wanted, I, this just helped me with the overall look. Um, but I literally picked colors from that top row, which is like pastels, like whites that are slightly colored. Like I had to go for those because as soon as I held something up in the middle of the row that looks like a light pastel, you know, green, blue or something, it was way too dark next to the painting. So always bring something to test, compare your colors to, or to know kind of what you're doing. Because once you get into the, you know, the store's lighting and next to a bunch of other colors, you get what's called color interaction. And so you have to make sure you know exactly what colors you want and go in without being influenced otherwise. So these are the colors I'm working with. Supplies, I have a rag, a cup of water or jug of water, got some paper towels, I've got a spray bottle to kind of force the paint, move the paint with water. I've got many brushes. Brushes. Um, and I do need to grab some sandpaper, which I kind of think won't happen until it's dry and I kind of assess the situation and see how it's going and kind of blend things, but that's kind of the plan. I do have extra white that we've used on the walls here in front of me as well. So if I need to go back, backtrack or just mix white with my paint, I'm able to do that. But for now, I'm gonna kind of jump in and you guys are gonna kind of come along the journey. I'll probably voice over this part um, so that I can really focus and not have to worry about what the camera is catching. So 
um, there you have it. All right, bye for now, we'll see how this goes. So I started in the far left upper corner with just some yellow. I, I kind of was thinking, you know, if I'm gonna, if this is gonna really pop off the wall and be interesting and not darken the wall, I have to put a bright color in the corners. That's what I was thinking <laughs> when I started, was let's just do yellow in a corner because the corner is gonna be darker and just see how it goes. And obviously I started brushing it on with just a paintbrush because I knew that was, you know, my first step. Then I started spraying to achieve some drips, but then I thought, let me just rub it around and kind of see how it reacts with a little bit of water on the wall using paper towel to rub it. And it was definitely, you know, wall paint dries pretty quickly and you get sort of a tackiness to it as it dries. And so that starts to happen pretty quickly, which is exactly what I wanted because I want to be able to move it quickly but then let it dry to see what it looks like and not have it too wet you know like oil or something like that so i'd spray it let it drip and kind of watch and see what happens i wanted to catch the drips because i didn't want them to drip all the way down or get on the window or anything like that so i was using paper towel to kind of soak up those extra drips you can see up close here those drips moving the paint so that you get actual yellow drops, yellow lines of paint. Then I went on to the next color. Each time I added a color, I overlap it a little bit with the first one because I do want them to mix on the edges a little bit and working wet on wet, letting my paints blend while they're wet was key for this look. Taking my paper towel, rubbing it, rubbing it as much as possible to kind of smooth edges. Because it dries quickly, you do have to smooth those rough edges. I didn't want anything that was sharp edges to it, so I had to soften edges quickly between colors because once I put a new color down, the next color may have been already drying and so blending those edges can be a little difficult. I obviously went right up to the edge of the tape because I do want my color to go right to the edge and um, using my spray bottle again, creating drips, creating water drops. As I went though and I kept dabbing, I actually would take a paper towel and and lift up some of the paint to reveal the wall again because I liked I mean, the whole distressed idea is that you're seeing the wall through the paint. And through this whole process, I thought I'd maybe like sand to reveal more of that. But honestly, I was getting the exact effect I wanted, this faux effect. Um, so it was working and I was really excited that it was working. Deciding which colors went next was always a, was a hard thing because I knew that like you know green next to that pink might create sort of a brown, so I, and which I was okay with because I didn't I did want some neutrals that was totally fine with me, but I had to just be aware of that. And as I went, I realized that certain colors weren't as vibrant as others, and so I had to go back and add some more thick layer, more thick paint on top of like the green, for example. Now, as I sprayed, I would also wait a few minutes, move on to the next color, and those wet drops of water, those trails of water, I would actually take a paper towel and rub over it to get, sort of to eliminate the water drop and to reveal the wall again. So a lot of my water drops that, that ended up staying were ones that I basically erased out of there. They weren't just the paint dripping down. It was like water that had dripped down and I then removed the paint underneath it, which was really cool. I liked, I liked having both of those types of drips happening at the same time. Then at this point I was forcing some drips of paint. I wanted, once the wall was kind of finished with the layout of color that I wanted, I then went back and put more thick paint in the spots that had those specific colors and then forced it down with the water to get some actual paint drips. Of course I had to sort of blend the top edge of that so it didn't look too like I just, you know, 
splattered paint on it. I wanted it to look like as I was painting it, it was dripping. So I had to force that to happen by going back and adding more paint, more thick paint, even dipping my brush in a little bit of water before I put it on the wall helped create those drips. Then obviously I step away to kind of just see the whole thing at once. And there were spots I just had to sort of fix up that maybe too much of the white wall was showing. So having to go back and cover that a little bit more, add some more drips, eliminate more drips. Um, but overall, I loved, loved the look of it and how it was looking and getting those drips in the color as well as the white drips, which was just water basically taking off the paint. You can really see it right here where those white water drops are basically removed and it removes the paint and reveals the white wall. I just was happy with the blending. There was no sharp edges. I did a few tweaks in here to just thicken the paint. And again, I went with those super, super light pastel paint so that it was really not very obvious. Any darker, these would have looked too harsh. It would have been harder to blend the edges. Then I moved on to the bathroom wall and did a similar thing. Started in the corners, upper corner, and worked down um, and putting paint down, rubbing it with my paper, paper towel, adding water drops, eliminating the water drops, moving things around, blending edges like did the exact same thing, keeping in mind again that I wanted my colors to blend nicely and I wanted brighter colors in the corners and so that's why I ended up kind of doing the green across the middle because the green is the darkest in value. So I definitely wanted to keep that towards the middle of the wall. You can see here I'm dripping more paint down. forcing more drops, but I'm really happy with the end result of that room as well. The lighting is different. So I painted these during the day. The morning light, it looks the best. And then of course that bathroom space with the artificial light inside and less natural light. It definitely doesn't look quite as nice as this other wall out here that'll be above the sink. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm loving the blending of colors. I love how the drips turned out that I could kind of put water down and then erase it off of there and then force more paint drops to happen. It just was, it was really, really fun to create this faux wall, this distressed wall. I think honestly it ended up better than I was thinking. It's just super subtle and just just pretty, honestly. Then later I did, when I pulled off the tape, went through and fixed up the edges because some of the paint seeped under the tape. And so I just took some of the white wall paint that we were using and just fixed up my corners and edges. So it was really slick and clean on the, on the border. That's it guys, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that it would have success and get the faux look that you're looking for. But this was kind of my process, so if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Bye!